Hi, Michael Hurwich here for CreativeCow.net with an introduction to interactivity and debugging for CreateJS. This is a follow-up to two previous tutorials. In the first one, we installed the CreateJS toolkit for Flash and published a simple animation from the Flash authoring environment to HTML and JavaScript. And in the second tutorial, we edited the JavaScript to modify the animation. In this tutorial, we're going to continue with editing JavaScript, but this time to introduce some interactivity into the animation and also to do a little simple debugging using a very simple but useful JavaScript statement, the alert statement. Before we start, I want to show you one thing that I changed in the Flash project this time before publishing, which is I renamed the tween from its default name, tween1, to ellipse1. So here we had tween1 in the CS Creator 4 FLA, and here we have ellipse1 in the CS Creator 5 FLA. And that difference shows up in CS Creator 4.js and CS Creator 5.js. It doesn't change the functionality in any way, but of course it's always better to give your library items meaningful names, and especially here since CreateJS will use those meaningful names when you publish. Okay, so I'm going to get out of the 04 files. We're not going to be using those. But the 05 files are exactly the same as the 04, with the one exception I just mentioned, namely this. Well, actually, I've added a few things, but for the moment, I've commented them all out with the double slashes, so they aren't having any effect. And you can see, if I run this, it looks exactly like it did in the first tutorial. So let's start with the alert statement. And let's start with the .js file. Line 21 and several lines following that. Notice all the thises. This initialize. This shape. This add child. What are all the thises referring to? We can get a pretty good hint by using the alert statement, just like this. Alert this. And save. And then run this. And the alert tells us that this refers to a container object that doesn't have a name. Name equals null. That may not seem terribly enlightening, but actually it's a useful piece of information that our shape, that is the ellipse, is inside a container object. And the container is a standard type of object. If you look at the EaselJS API documentation, you can find out all about it. Okay. So now I'm going to comment this alert statement out again and go over to the HTML file. And from now on, we're going to be focusing on the HTML file, though actually still editing JavaScript in the HTML file. And I'm going to make a lot of use of the children property. And this refers to the tree structure that's created when you export a Flash project using CreateJS. For example, you have the stage and then perhaps a couple of movie clip objects that are children of the stage. And each movie clip can have as its children one or more container objects, which can have shape objects as their children. And then each shape can have graphics within it. But this is only one possible hierarchy, one of the simpler possible hierarchies. And understanding what your hierarchy looks like is critical to working successfully with it. And this alert statement is going to tell us what the first child of the stage is, child 0, since the counting starts at 0 when you're looking at children. So save and run. And the answer is that it's a movie clip with no name. So just as we saw, movie clips in the next level under the stage. Now, in this project, we only have one movie clip, but in a more complex project, it might be very useful to name your objects. So let's name this movie clip. And I'll do that by uncommenting this line. And now the alert shows the name. And going down to the next level, we're looking at the first child of this movie clip. And that is a container with no name. So we'll give it a name. And voila. And then the child of the container turns out to be a shape, which we can also name. 
And notice that in this case we can use the variable shape instead of children zero. And we can see that variable name used here, and that's where I got that from. But I could use children zero here instead if I wanted to as well. So that's just some very simple debugging using the alert statement, the children property, and the name property. For simple projects, that may be all you need to orient yourself and troubleshoot problems having to do with your hierarchy. So now on to interactivity. For this, we're going to use the onClick method of the movie clip object. If you want to know more about this, you can check out the API documentation. Basically, it's an event that's generated when the user clicks and releases the mouse, and it passes a parameter containing a mouse event instance. So this is the movie clip, and we're saying that when the user clicks this movie clip, a function called ellipseClick is going to fire. And here's that function. We'll start with a simple alert showing the mouse event that gets passed. You can see that it has three properties, type, which equals on click, and then stage X and stage Y. And if you want to go more in depth on that, you could look at the JavaScript file that implements the mouse event. And these files are extensively commented, and you can find out that stage X is the X position of the mouse relative to the stage, and similarly for stage Y. So let's go ahead and look at stage Y. And you can see that the farther up I let it go before I click, the smaller the numbers get. Because Y starts with zero at the top of the stage, and gets larger as it goes down. And finally, let's try actually changing something in response to the click. So again, children, children, children is the shape. Let's go to the API documentation and see what properties we can work with for a shape. And there are lots of them. We're going to choose rotation, which is the rotation in degrees. And we're just going to increase the rotation by 10 degrees with each click. So there you have it, a little bit of debugging and interactivity for CreateJS. I hope this has been helpful, and thanks for tuning in.